Hey guys, it's John, your Tennessee flying farmer. I believe it's time for another airplane update. This guy's good. Now, here's our farmer, John Humbred. Look at that! Oh my God! That was Whoa. good. Whoa. <laughs> Honestly, a whole lot of stuff hasn't really happened since you guys saw this last time. It hasn't really changed much. Uh, there's been too much other stuff going on and I'm still in this crazy holding pattern for getting the front fork and front strut and all this stuff set up for this Super Duty and um, moving forward with that. It's kind of messing with my mind with what I want to do next. There's still, I mean, you can see there's still all kinds of stuff I could be doing to this Super Duty, but I mean, I want it on its three wheels and that's been kind of a process it's been two and a half years in the making at this point and i just man i want that done anyway material for the custom fork is at my local machine shop it's been there for three or four weeks now it's hopefully in the lineup to get machined very soon once i get that i can mount it to this stock zenith gear um, and get things actually mocked up and get this engine mount it on there and get some things going and get it off that stand at the back that's holding it up and off of this so it can actually stand on its own feet and not be kind of unstable with how it's how it's laying there anyway once it's that way in the meantime i can be trying to get my custom strut in the works i can get the final dimensions and all that stuff and maybe that can be in the process too and it'll be an easier swap i'll just have to remove this one and put the other one in you know, of course unbolt the the fork once i get it and bolt it to the new one and all that kind of stuff so anyway while i've been waiting on that and struggling with that whole mind game of trying to figure out what's next what i can be doing and um, what i want to be doing on this thing i'm going through a pretty pretty major clean out of my shop basement uh, a lot of things i'll let you guys look here I, if you've been in my shop any time recently at all <laughs> you're going to notice some pretty big changes here i um, got my fuel trailer kind of getting set up i had this tank sitting in the back behind the plane i've got it on the trailer now that's going to be my av gas or my fuel for the super duty got an old farm truck that's in the lineup for work i've got a bobcat in here it's in the lineup for maintenance a lot of just general cleanup a lot of things happening here so I'm excited about all of that stuff. It's when you do a major clean out, you know, things get a lot more messy before they get better, but it's, it's in the works and I'm, I'm excited about where it's headed. I'm gonna have some, hopefully some extra room to get some of these other projects underway that I've been putting off a little bit. You know, I've been really wanting to focus on this Super Duty, but of course I have the single seater back there in the background that's um, I've really been looking at it and really been trying to figure out the the mission for it, I guess you would say. And anyway, in that whole process with it, and since I'm waiting on parts for the Super Duty and I've kind of got the holding pattern with it going, you can see there are two wings in the background, one standing up and one here that's pretty much complete. It's ready for final riveting. All I like on the Super Duty wings is putting the electrical and the plumbing for the fuel system in and they are ready to button up for the final and you see also there's another wing skeleton sitting here on the table now i've dug out all the parts to build the wing for my single seat zenith there are the plans for it that's sort of the what the skeleton looks like for the zenith 701 so I've been really kind of thinking about this whole single seat 701 and uh, like I said, the mission, um, you know, this Super Duty, turn this back around, this Super Duty, I've gone pretty radical, really. I'm going with a lot of titanium parts. You know, that control tube is all titanium. You guys have seen the beginning of my brake pedals under there. All oh, that's titanium. So I've got a lot of titanium stuff in the works and it's, it's pretty extreme. Uh, you know, it's the Super Duty Extreme is what I'm calling it. So it is it is going pretty extreme. Custom engine mount, custom a lot of things. But I really, I really want to get back to this single seat. I want to start pursuing it some more while I've got stuff in the in in the weight. 
I know you guys have seen it before. I've kind of shown this and just ignore the mock-up stuff I've got in it, but this is the basic single seat layout. Uh, looking at it from the front, you can see a, a little bit of the, what would be the center tunnel of a normal 701. I've essentially eliminated that whole left side into the center tunnel. So you, all you have is just the right seat. And I've narrowed down the rear fuselage to match what the single seat Zenith 701 would be. And that brings me back to this wing. I've, I've been studying this wing and I've got, you know, how radical do I really want to go with this thing? It's, I could build it just as a standard 701 wing or I have so many, man, I have so many ideas floating around here that I want to do. I, I could make this thing just crazy extreme on radical. I want to lose some weight on it too. But there's one question I've got you guys might be able to help me with. I'm, I'm struggling with this one. What I've got laid out here, this is a 701 nose rib. This is a 701 slat tip, the fiberglass tip. Um, the Super Duty uses essentially the exact same profile. This is, this is another 701 uh, nose rib because I already have my Super Duty nose ribs installed. But they are almost identical as far as the actual size profile. However, these slats are quite a bit bigger on the Super Duty. It actually curves up further on the nose rib. And it's kind of hard to see here. Let me get these rearranged where you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And this is, and this is very roughly placed. Um, I know it's not spaced accurately, but anyway, you can see right there that there's a, there's a tremendous amount of difference between the 701 slat and the Super Duty slat, just the general length and how much further up it goes. A lot of difference. And I've been thinking about this a lot for my 701 platform and what it's gonna be capable of. Um, here's the thing, my Super 701 has been an absolute beast. And I know it works really, really well with this setup down in the 15 to 20 mile per hour range. However, with the 701 that I'm building, the single seat, my plan is to lighten this plane at least 100 pounds. Maybe, you know, my goal is to lighten it close to 200 pounds. If I'm able to do that, I should be able to slow this thing down quite a bit more even below the 15 mile per hour speed. So here's my ultimate question. There are all kinds of slat studies you can find online as far as performance and all that kind of stuff, but most of them, I mean, the realistic aspect is most of these slat studies are based on air speeds of 30 miles per hour and up. They're not looking at speeds that I'm, I'm talking 10 to 15 miles per hour. What my question is, what kind of profile and what kind of setup works best when you get under the 15 mile per hour range? Um, I know Scrappy uses a dual slat setup and I don't, I just don't think a double slat is gonna be worth it for the extra weight and all that kind of stuff on my single seat. But a single slat that is set up correctly could be a, a big, big deal for this thing. So in my mind, I'm thinking that I would be better off to go with the Super Duty slats, of course, I'm going to have to start looking at some more things like how thick is the skin and all that kind of stuff because I don't want to add a whole lot of weight to go from the 701 slat to the Super Duty slat. But if I can get a, a good performance gain by doing so, I, you know, I would do that in a heartbeat. Maybe I could build a Super Duty slat with thinner skins that match the 701 type weight, but just add the extra the extra benefit of what what it would give if there is one. Anyway, long story short, I, I'd like to talk to someone who has a little bit of experience with this whole studies on slats, especially at the super low speeds that I'm looking at. Um, like I said, I don't know, maybe the maybe the Pades or I'm not sure. You guys have any suggestions, please shoot them my way. I would love to talk to them for just a few minutes. And I don't want to take a whole lot of anybody's time. Um, but this is a question I kind of want to be able to plan on up front. Uh, anyway, the two questions I have for you guys in this video. One is, send me the correct direction on who I can talk to with these slats designs. Um, I want to be able to have this single seat 701 to fly down 
10 miles per hour. That's, that's my goal. I want to be able to have this thing where it is reasonably steady and stable in the air at 10 miles per hour because I know for a fact my Supro 701 will do it at 15. Um, second question is, how radical should I go with this 701? How extreme should I really go with it? Should I just continue on with what I've got, narrow it down to the single seat, build a standard 701 wing and put it on it and fly it? Or should I go all out? You know, I'm sitting here looking at all this titanium stuff. I've got started with the titanium. So, so at this point, I've already convinced myself all the control system for this single seat 701 is going to be titanium. The brake pedals, the all the control stick and the, the torque tube and all that stuff is all going to be titanium. It's going to be a similar setup to what I have here with the Super Duty. That stick is all titanium. You guys have seen that in the previous videos. Um, anyway, I'm considering building the entire cabin frame out of titanium and quite possibly even the engine mount. So when I get to building the engine mount for the single seat 701, it may be titanium. So anyway, back to my two questions. The first one being the slats. What kind of design, what, what kind of changes do I need to make to get this thing down realistically into the 10 mile per hour range? And the second question is, how radical do you guys think I should go on that single seat 701? It could be, it could be extremely radical, it could be extremely extreme, or I could just build it as a single seat 701 and run with it. Give me your comments, give me your feedback, your thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. I do watch everything, uh, the comments you leave. I appreciate uh, people who reach out and check on me and that kind of stuff. You are all appreciated. Anyway, I'm gonna call that a wrap for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's, you can get to see a little bit of what's going on in the background here and a lot of things coming. So hang in there, stay with me. Thank you guys, see ya.